Zia Scaravalli from CK Research here, and I'm uh, on set on the stage actually at Avaya's Engage Conference, Engage 2023, uh, in Orlando, Florida. And I'm delighted to be joined by Katie Lillendahl. And how do I describe you? You're a tech guru, you're a country artist singer, I know. you're kind of this visionary as well, consumer electronics expert. How would you describe yourself? Goodness, it's, it's, it's a mouthful for sure. It's yeah. a blessing. I've been working in consumer tech for 20 years now, but yes, also dabble in the country music space, which is a huge passion for me. So the best of both worlds, music and technology. Yeah, so as I mentioned, we are here at Avise User Conference, it's yes. done in conjunction with the IUG. What did you think of the event? Oh my goodness, so I've had the pleasure to be emceeing for the past two days. It has been a remarkable experience, not only on stage and hosting, but also working with the teams behind the scenes and seeing what they have in the roadmap for products and innovation moving forward and just working so intimately, getting a grasp of everything going on. And it's like, it's an exciting time at Avaya. It really is. Yeah, in fact, I've been to many engages. Uh, this is maybe uh, seven, eight, something like that for me. And I will say that there's more energy at this one than I've seen in a long time. And probably yes. has a lot to do, obviously, with the change in leadership and things like that. But you're coming at a good time, and it was uh, great to see MC the event. So. Well, good to have you here. As <laughs> yeah. soon as I saw you pop up, I'm like, we have to meet up. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk tech. Yes. Okay, since that, that is your passion, and obviously my passion, too, as a tech analyst. Uh, you had uh, on stage... Uh, three of your favorite technologies now, and let's count them down three to one, and then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you my opinions as well. So number three was? Number three was AI and music. And I preface by saying, I think everybody's like, oh my gosh, we have to talk about AI again. But and to echo what I said earlier on stage, I have never in 20 years of covering consumer technology so intimately seen something that has hit so many different industries as AI so quickly in terms of acceleration. Yeah, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, uh, earlier this year at his event, uh, NVIDIA's GPU technology conference, called it the iPhone moment for AI, mm. chat GPT. And uh, it's interesting because I think that, and I've thought about that, that phrase, was it the iPhone moment? And what that did was it made it accessible for everybody. That was it. Right? It's not that AI was here yesterday. Yeah. It's just been democratized. And I even think back to like 2008 when I was playing IBM Watson in a full game of Jeopardy for a segment yes. I was doing on CBS. And it, we had the capabilities then, of course, everybody knows that, but at the same time now being in the, on your iPhone to be able to utilize ChatGPT, it's incredible. Yeah, I do think there's a lot of fear and concern about it. And sure. you brought up some things in your, uh, in, in your presentation about people using it for nefarious activities. And I don't think we've thought through that yet. Right. But it is getting easier and easier for fraudsters to actually yep. use it to deep fake people. To I've, I've talked to organizations where they get calls from their CEO. It's wild. Yeah. And well, and the, the deep fakes. I mean, and so talk about uh, d democratizing technology. So to be able to create a deep fake in just a few frames of audio or a few frames of photos or video and to be able to manipulate somebody's voice or yeah. what they're saying. I mean, a lie travels a lot faster, so it's, it's a wild time in terms of cyber. Yeah, but of security. I do think it is going to have massive societal change. It's going to allow people uh, to focus more on hard problems instead of doing a lot of the mundane things. Mm. In fact, I think especially, you know, in the Avaya space of contact center, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, there's a lot of manual heavy lifting in contact center answering you know, how do I reset my password, things like that. And with natural language processing and some of the large language models, the, uh, the virtual assistants now are a lot smarter. And I think you've probably experienced this in the past where there were no help at all. Yeah. And they frustrate you, right? Mm -hmm. and, and all you want to do is like slam the phone down because they're so bad. So I do think it's going to improve that. And um, well, did, we were talking yesterday. <laughs> I set off the fire alarm the other night in my hotel room. Yeah, don't do that. Oh, it was so bad. It was so embarrassing. And I called down though. And it's like, hey, I'm Kiva, how can I help you? And I was like, oh, you know, I, is it just me? Is it my room or did I set it off? Like, is the whole building going off? Like, what's the deal? And she kept talking and I was like, I feel so rude. I was like, is this a robot or a human? <laughs> and then she repeated herself. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just got duped by AI, but very It's funny though, because now sometimes if I'm talking to a human and it's a simple request, that annoys me. Where really? before it used to be, well, because I just want a quick answer. Uh. And, and the bot will answer it a lot faster uh, than a human huh. can. And uh, I do know for this audience, there's a lot of IT people here that are concerned it's going to take their jobs. And I saw some uh, World Economic Forum data that said it would eliminate 70 million jobs, but create 120 million. So every one of these big transitions we've seen, people thought the computer would get rid of jobs. Mm. And it sure looks like it's created a whole lot more jobs than it's disruptive. So. How do you feel about taking a pause, though, and just an assessment moment? 
I don't think you can. I, I, I think the train's going. And Ship I think sailed. If, yeah, and I think if the country were to take a pause, we would fall behind. And in you fact, this, is, this has been um, really sort of a passion for me is trying to move the government a little along. Because if you look at the US today, we are below the midpoint for STEM, right? And so we are falling behind in the area of science, technology, and mm -hmm. math, engineering and math. And uh, I think it's about time. And part of that is the fact that we have so many of the uh, rural areas don't have good broadband. And from an infrastructure standpoint, we, we just aren't as advanced as a lot of countries now. And I think if we were to take a pause on AI, we would actually hurt ourselves. The, the train is left, it's coming, and we need to figure out how to work this into our lives safely. And I'd rather see the government regulators focus on that versus trying to Ooh. pause it. Interesting take. Yeah. Okay, number two was? Number two. Uh, reinventing the wheelchair. And I have specific focus on, I'm very passionate about innovations and technology that can help people's lives. Yes. That is the tech that I look for the most that I can share with my audiences. And in particular, I was focused today on sharing about the iBot. An iBot is the only mobility product that combines all of the mobility and features to get someone with a disability from point A to point B Invented by Dean Kamen, of course, the insulin pump inventor, the Segway inventor, 10,000 patents. I'm amazed by him. I've been following him since my, since my <laughs> youth. Um, but he created the iBot, which allows six different modes. It is a power wheelchair, and it is incredible because it goes on all different kinds of terrains, from sand to snow to gravel, and allows you to be at eye level with an individual and also even climb curbs and stairs. So we're taking something that hasn't really been fundamentally overhauled since the 1600s and saying like, let's redo this, we can do better. So I've been focused on the iBot and also donating one to a veteran through my music uh, where proceeds from my song go and I'm just fascinated by it. Now think about if you combine AI with the iBot and then if it rolled up to somebody and they were above their height, it would automatically adjust to eye level, mm. right? You could do that. Well, it, that's the same principle of, of using like a, a Waze or as, as yes. it, people don't realize how much AI we're already integrating into our daily lives, the easy ones. Yeah. So, yeah. And there has to be some AI in there because I, I saw your video and I'll include the link in the YouTube description below um, that uh, uh, it, it adjusts the stairs and things like that. Yes. So it's got to have some AI totally. in there to do that. But I do think what you're looking at there is it's no longer a wheelchair is really more a robot. Correct. And robot technology has come a long way, and uh, I think we're past the science fiction fear we're really gonna become self-aware and kill us all. <laughs> Who knows though, maybe. But uh, I, I think there's a lot of assistive robots out there now in the workplace, they co they're, they, they're also known as cobots, that can do a lot of things that people, um, just it would too, be too dangerous to do, right? Mm -hmm. And so again, I think this is uh, something that's gonna allow us to do, be much more productive, because we're not doing a lot of the things that really we shouldn't be doing as people. So I do think robot technology has come a long way and it's getting easier to train robots as well. And that's another AI um, uh, element where you can train them now in these, in, uh, in these augmented worlds and upload the data. So if you think about what it took to train that, the, the chair initially, he would have had to build stairs to go up and down. Uh, he would have to build like potholes and gravel roads and side hills. Now you can all do that in all in a virtual world and upload the data. So mm. I think uh, what, what you showed there can happen faster than it could before. That's pretty exciting. Great for accessibility. Yeah. yeah. And I alluded to the, your number one tech trend. My number one tech trend is polarizing, but I think we're at this interesting point with VR, AR, and mixed reality. Yes. And I, I say that because it there's so many... Obviously, as you know, big tech companies that have just tried their hand at it, and nobody has really come out a surefire yeah. winner. And I feel like we're at this inflection point with ProVision, with Apple's announcement coming out in Q1 of next year. Wow. Like, I am like grabbing the popcorn and watching this play out. Like, I'm interested in your opinion. I think we're all like price yeah. point, big thing here. But for the consumer, does it catch on? Yeah, price points will continue to fall. They always do. Right, if you look but, at the- But $3,500? Yeah, price points will fall. Right now it's a little expensive. It's a good high-end gaming system. I think it's a great, today it would be even good for high-end real estate. Or I mentioned that, yes. Things, things like that. Uh, uh, even high-end vacation experiences if you want to see what it's like. Uh, but I do think uh, it will get um, democratized and we'll start seeing um, VR goggles come down. It just, every, everything does get cheaper with time. Well, and we know right? Apple. I mean, never doubt yeah. them. Yeah. To, rethink the way that we look at our watches or look at our phones or listen to music. I mean, never can put any doubt behind. And I'm, I think just in terms of a win for the consumer market, 
people are already like, oh, what's this provisional art all about? So yeah. it's already a bit the of great, a victory The great for thing PR. about Apple, though, is they have figured out how to make things, take a systems approach to things. And so if you were to look at, uh, is an iPhone better than another competitive phone? Uh, you can make an argument for some of the, you know, like the Galaxy phones and stuff with better mm -hmm. cameras. Is Are there better watches? Are there better computers? But all their stuff works together really well. So I can pause, oh, yeah. you know, I can pause your video on my computer and pick it up on my iPhone and I'll, One more I'll, in the ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, right, and it, it is part of the ecosystem. I think too, what's, and you mentioned augmented reality, I'm really a big fan of augmented Same. reality because it gives us, uh, you think of a doctor being able to wear something like, I know they tried this with Google Glass, but it'll get better, where instead of having to stop a surgery and go look up x-rays, they can call it up on their augmented ooh, reality glasses. Ooh. There's already cycling glasses that have augmented reality mm -hmm. displays and they show you heart rate speed, things like that. And you think about it in the, for, for this audience, things like field service. Imagine having a field service person who's trying to repair, uh, repair some machinery and their hands are busy, so now they can pull it up on the augmented reality glasses. And mm -hmm. so that's something where if we can blend the virtual and physical worlds together, that gives us that, that really that best of both worlds type of experience and there's there's been good use cases for it already just again the price needs to come down a little I said you know as, as if you if it's too pricey there's always the OG of the Viewmaster for $35 I am a big fan of the Viewmaster I, I love saw the Viewmaster yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is you gotta go take the pictures first and things like that but uh, yeah do you have a Viewmaster of your videos well actually <laughs> the, there's a Viewmaster on the market that you can purchase and make your own custom slides yeah. and I'm like it's like literally under $40. I'm like, what a cool little consumer yeah. gadget to have. But, you know, you think back to the early days, even the digital cameras, they were very expensive. But now they're built into your phones and things like that. So I, I suspect we're going to start seeing more and more augmented reality. In fact, I've seen some iPhone apps. There's one in the UK where you can hold up your phone to the street and it'll tell you where the nearest subway station is. Mm. It'll tell you, you know, the Holborn station is 0.2 kilometers mm. in that direction. And so uh, these are all things that make us smarter. They, you know, they, they allow us to, uh, to do things quicker and quicker and quicker. So... What do you think of my top three? I go, it was hard to narrow down. Yeah. It was uh, hard well, to narrow down. Yeah, I think uh, I might have flipped it and had AI one just because that. No, no, uh, no rationale, though, to okay. the one, two, three. Yeah, because yeah, I would 100% agree with you, go one on AI. Yeah, and I, and I think um, in some ways automation, it's not really a technology, but I do think we're on the verge of having a, a lot, more, lot more in the way of automated autonomous vehicles, mm. things like that. Just, just a, you a, need a, a top 100. Yeah, we do need a <laughs> top hundred. So, <laughs> but you're actually some of the the use cases you came up with. I had, you know AI music and things like that is pretty oh, yeah. interesting. So the Beatles now have another song out, yes. and things like that. So, yes. so these things. But the problem is now we have no idea if these things are authentic or not. So that's the other. That's yeah. a whole other topic. Yeah. Yep. And I think the impact of all these things in security is pretty interesting too, because it seems like the bad guys are far outpacing mm -hmm. the good guys when it mm -hmm. comes to the use of things. So. Crazy so, times. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Katie. Well, uh, I certainly appreciate the time. You're amazing. Yeah. Thank you for being well, here, you're by amazing. the way. Yeah, no, thank you. That so was awesome. uh, that's great. And I look forward to whatever corporate event you're at next. <laughs> awesome. Stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. So on behalf of Katie Lillendahl, I'm C.S. Caravalla. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on another video. Bye. Thanks.